Seven years. Eight years. I did fall pregnant and I had a miscarriage. It was the worst pain in my life. I'm destined to be a mother. You have to become our world. We can't be silent about it. Women don't want to talk about this. But what if we put our problems there for everyone to see, to help other people? The Salome range of products tackle issues of infertility, menstrual pain and heavy menstrual bleeding. When I'm jumping off in the taxi, I have to keep checking myself if I'm missed. I used to suffer from very bad cramps. I couldn't stand up straight. I think it's not something to be ashamed of. So let's talk about it. Let's just normalize these kind of conversations. The Salome range of products tackle issues of infertility, menstrual pain and heavy menstrual bleeding. A very good evening and welcome. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. To those of you who are joining us for the first time this evening, welcome to you and uh, the ones we were with last night. And uh, I hope you did tell a friend how much fun we had last night and how much uh, we were educated and well informed. Welcome once again uh, to the Salome webinar. And uh, thank you for helping us break the silence. It's, way, it's been long overdue uh, that we have this conversation as women. Uh, and uh, we are going to have much fun. I have to just uh, mention that please send your questions not on the chat box, uh, but rather on the Q&A box uh, so that we are able to access them and answer each and every question. We may not be able to go through all the questions tonight, um, but we avail our social media platforms where you will find some of the answers. And uh, tonight we have in store for you uh, Walter Mbata, uh, who will be introducing 360 Biomedicine and the Salome range. And I'm sure you're looking forward to hearing uh, what else we have in store. And we also have Dr. Lusanda um, Shimange Matsuse, uh, who is going to talk to us about menstrual issues, uh, various menstrual issues issues and uh, looking at the treatment options that are available and accessible to us as well. And uh, then we conclude with uh, Dr. Cindy Siwe uh, Fansale, aka Dr. Cindy, who's going to talk to us about uh, some of the common um, conditions that women present with in her practice, especially in relation to women's reproductive health. And right now, without any much further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, Walter Mbata, who's the CEO of Biometrics. Good evening and welcome. Thank you, um, Chriselda. Thank you for a very um, warm welcome. Um, and uh, let me also take this opportunity to welcome um, all our guests. Uh, for those of you who are joining us um, for the second time and if you joined us yesterday, uh, you cannot have too much of a good thing. So yes, welcome back. And for those that are joining us for the first time today, let's hope you find this session very much uh, informative. Um, and you create a platform where both us and you can actually learn from each other and, um, and, and, and grow. Um, if I can also go through to my uh, presentation, just to give you a brief overview of um, the company, um, as to say who we are um, as 360. Um, some of you might be uh, hearing this presentation for the second time. But for the benefit of those that are hearing it for, for the first time, I hope you also find it very informative. Uh, 360 uh, Biomedicine, we are actually a level one um, BEE company. We're a subsidiary of 360 Global Solutions Group, which is uh, formerly known as uh, 360 Financial Services Group, which has several businesses that have business interest in funeral, financial, healthcare, scientific, and technology and client services business. As a business of uh, 360 Biomedicine, we mainly focus on developing products from natural extract and organic ingredient in trying to establish high quality um, level of, um, of product in order to bring solution to the global market. Um, in order to ensure that we actually participate not only on the local uh, market, but also on the global space as a formidable player within the biotech space, we, we found it that it was essential for us to actually establish strategic relationship with some industrial um, industry leaders, both locally and internationally. 
uh, and this actually it, it, it created as um, a platform where we develop products that can actually bring solutions and improve livelihoods and improve lives of, of, of our people. Next slide, please. Um, for those that are hearing the word 360 biomedicine um, for the first time, I wouldn't necessarily be greatly surprised because we are a very young company, but very ambitious company. Um, I think we've um, uh, been very active um, in the market in the last actually um, eight months. And um, if uh, we already have launched several products that are available in the market, and we have several few products within the pipeline that are still gonna be launched um, within the space of this financial year, which I'll actually inform you guys later about those um, uh, at the, towards the end of my presentation. As a business, we've also seen that it was important to actually, in terms of growth, to acquire certain existing business that are in line with the similar visions that we have. So we've acquired Troy Pharmaceutical, which is actually now called 360 Herbal Health. It's a company that has been in business for over a decade, is based in KZN, in Peter Maritzburg to be precise. Their key focus is actually to manufacture and commercialize herbal and uh, traditional based medicine, including also personal care product, um, like cosmetic product, hair product, um, uh, looking also into, into, in, into uh, medicated soaps for different uh, uh, skin conditions as well. As a company, um, as I've mentioned uh, in my previous slide, that it was very imperative for us to actually form certain strategic relationships. And one of those relationships is actually our collaboration with the CSIR, which is the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Um, this is for us actually a pipeline for um, our research and development. This en enables us to actually develop innovative products that will bring solutions to, to healthcare challenges that we, we're facing as, as a nation. And we feel as a company, it's very important, important for us to also develop products that are of the highest quality and backed up by science. We also, within the group, um, affiliated with another biotech company, which I'm also privileged to, 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 to be uh, heading, which is 360 Biopharmaceutical, which focuses on uh, developing of innovative allopathic medicine, which is targeted at solving, um, uh, 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 providing solutions to South African healthcare problems such as infectious disease. Um, and I've mentioned in the past that our main key focus on under biomedicine is to use natural and organic science um, to develop complementary medicine, which actually led us in also in participating in the space of um, uh, developing and, and commercialization cannabis-based uh, product. Um, at the moment, we have two products that we have under that space, uh, which are um, uh, made out of a CBD-based uh, product for dermatological conditions. Next slide, please. Uh, I think this slide actually sums up the main objective and the purpose why we actually gathered here um, this evening um, under the theme, Break the Silent. I think for us, it was important as, as a company and as a business to be part of such a great initiative, um, to create a platform where both uh, males and females can actually come together and actually talk openly about um, these conditions that are affecting women, uh, which unfortunately, because of uh, stigma, uh, these conditions were not being spoken about and therefore they, they got left untreated. And as a business, we saw a gap to say, let's, let's create this platform, um, a safe space where we can engage, in doing so, also as a company to say, we invest in finding products that could bring solutions to these unspoken um, conditions. And, and, and then we, and for us to actually break the stigma. Uh, in doing so, there's three products that I've, made, that I've mentioned that we already have in the market, of which um, one of them, it focus on uh, treating infertility on women that suffer from PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. We also have a product uh, that uh, treats um, uh, women that suffer from menstrual pain and another product uh, that treats uh, women that suffer from heavy menstrual bleeding. Those are the three products that we currently have in the market. However, in the pipeline, as a sign of our commitment in trying to find innovative products to actually address all these issues that are, 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 are impacting on women's health, 
we will soon be launching product that is specifically targeted at uh, treating of PCOS and also another product um, that will treat premenstrual syndrome, another product to also manage and treat the symptoms associated with menopause. Um, these products are the products that we're actually planning to launch before the end of this current financial year. Next slide, please. Uh, the three products that I've already highlighted that are currently in the market that are available to the consumers, um, these are the three products uh, that I've highlighted. Salome Fertility, which mainly focus on, 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 on treating women that are suffering from uh, uh, PCOS. As a result, they suffer from infertility. So this, it helps to actually increase their ovulation and also helps to, 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 to um, manage um, hormonal imbalances as a reduction of uh, hyperandrogenism and also a, re a reduction of oxidative stress in the follicular fluid. We also have another product, which is uh, Salome Heavy Menstrual Bleeding, which is made out of a dry extract of Capsella Besta Pistorius. This has a scientific backing that has shown to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties that helps to actually reduce um, heavy menstrual bleeding. Um, and uh, the other products, the last product that we currently have in the market, it's uh, Salome Menstrual Pain, which is made from Achillea mellifolium, which is Yarrow, um, which is an antispasmodic, um, uh, has an antispasmodic properties and also anti-inflammatory and also a pain relieving effect. Um, which helps with pain associated with and, and cramps that are associated with the menstrual period. Next slide, please. Uh, with all the information that I've actually just uh, summarized, uh, for more detailed information, please uh, visit us on our website where you can actually find the detailed information and also um, scientific supporting information relating to our products. Uh, visit us on uh, www.360biomedicine.co.za. Um, on this website as well, we provide an e-commerce um, platform where you are able to actually buy some of these products um, on our online store. We also, um, these products are also available on uh, Take-A-Lot and several independent um, pharmacies as well. We are also available on, um, on our um, digital platform on uh, social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, with the, um, the, the handle at Salome Range. Um, and I hope uh, that you find uh, this presentation very informative and are uh, looking forward to actually engaging further. Thank you very much for awarding us uh, your, your presence. Thank you very much, Walter. Thank you for that insightful uh, presentation. And as an ambitious um, business, as you said, uh, we would like to have more uh, products that are suitable for you. Uh, so we're running a poll and would uh, love for you to just please uh, respond to these questions. When managing your female health issues, would you prefer to use herbal, natural products or prescription medication? Um, please uh, respond. Uh, to that poll and uh, we'll announce the results right at the end of, of the conversation. And uh, maybe if I can just uh, repeat that question, when managing your female health issues, would you prefer to use herbal, natural products or prescription medication? And uh, you just give us uh, your preference so that we can come up with more products. We did indicate that uh, we are very ambitious and uh, Walter being at the helm of uh, driving um, the medication that is going to be relevant uh, for the people. We thank you for that vision and thank you very much uh, for your presentation. And right at the end, uh, we are going to be giving, um, uh, we are going to be uh, uh, responding to questions and answers. And please uh, don't use the chat box, use the Q&A. And this is what you said. 82% of you are saying herbal natural and only 18% are saying uh, prescription medicine. Walter, that means you have a long job ahead of you uh, to come up with products that are going to be relevant for our health. And moving right along, thank you so much uh, to those who just joined us. I see the numbers are, are increasing. And uh, once again, please use the question and answer uh, box uh, where you um, ask questions to our guests. 
yes and uh, not use the chat box so that we are able to trace uh, the responses to your questions as well. And right now I'd like to call upon uh, Dr. Lusanda, Dr. Lusanda Shimange uh, Matsuso, who is uh, a gyne a, a, an obstetrician. Gosh, I remember my days on radio. Each time I try and say obstetrician. <laughs> so it would be easy to just say an obs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who has done amazing work uh, in, in just making it comfortable uh, for those of us who are going to a gynecologist for the very first time. I know as a young person, uh, when you are told gyne and you're thinking mm, it's going to be so uncomfortable, um, this person is going to be touching me in places that are, it's just discomfort. Uh, and with that smile, uh, Dr. Lusanda just makes it so easy to consult. Welcome and thank you so much. Uh, tell us about uh, menstrual uh, challenges and uh, what are the treatment options that are available? Because we can't be talking problems alone. Surely there must be answers as well. Thank you for that, Chrysalda, and, and also for dispelling the myths about how gynees are so terrible, but um, we're really good people and we're here to help you. So I'm just going to start sharing my presentation here. Um, right. So when I was preparing this presentation, I actually had a very funny situation where my, I've, I've got a house full of boys and that includes my husband as well. There's four of them. And my six year old comes to the front of the screen and he's like, mama, what's that? And I'm like, no, it's a woman on her menstruation. And he's like, oh, so I was trying to use big words so he could just like leave me to let me work. And then he goes, is that blood? And I said, yes. And she's like, and he's like, why does she have, why is there blood? And basically, basically um, I just said, um, it's something that happens to women um, every month. So he asked me, does that happen to you? And I'm like, yes, it does. And he's like, is that why you wear nappies? And I thought that was so priceless, but um, what I really liked about it, so there was such innocence. Um, in his questioning and, and, and I did not shy away from actually telling him what's going on. And the reason I'm actually telling the story, it's about let's break the silence about menstrual issues. Right. So with regards to menstruation, it really means different things to, um, to women. To some women, it means I feel sexy. To some women, it's freedom. To some women, it's, um, it's a curse. To some women, it's the truth. To some women, it's about their womanhood. And the reason I'm really saying this is that we all see our menstruation differently, and it's really something that you um, have to embrace. I've got a visitor in in my studio. So what is menstruation? Menstruation is a cyclical discharge of blood, secretions, and tissue debris from the uterus that recurs in non-pregnant breeding age primate females at approximately monthly intervals. And that is considered to represent a readjustment of the uterus to the non-pregnant state following the proliferative changes accompanying the preceding ovulation. So basically, that is really a mouthful. Your menstruation is the shedding of the lining of the womb that occurs um, on a monthly basis. Right, so what is a normal menstrual cycle? All right, so a normal menstrual cycle, those of you who were here yesterday would have already seen something similar to this slide. So 21 to 35 days, that's what's considered normal. Anything less than that or anything more than that is considered abnormal. Three to seven days, that is the number of days that you should have your menstruation. And likewise, anything less, anything more, that is considered abnormal. The 80 mils per cycle, now this is very interesting because yesterday someone was asking, um, on the Q&A, how do you know if you bleed 80 mils per cycle? And to be honest, you don't know. The only way you can measure it at home, and this is really a nice um, life hack because I have patients and this is what we do, is that when you use a menstrual cup, there are measurements on the side of the menstrual cup. So with that, every time you change your menstrual cup, you can actually calculate how much 
you have bled. But with that being said, normal flow is very relative. There has been research that where they asked women if they think they have a heavy flow or if they have a normal flow. And interestingly enough, 40% of women who think they have a heavy flow actually had a normal flow. And um, this is quite important because we get a lot of patients who are like, oh my gosh, my period is so heavy. I can't deal with life and so forth. And then when you go and like do a bit of investigations, you do a bit of blood work, everything is completely normal. There is no anemia or anything like that. But I get it. Not every woman wants to have a period. So nine to 51. So nine is basically the age of menarche. What does that mean? The first time a girl the average age a girl starts her menstruation. And we all remember our first time. And 51 is the average age of menopause. And then I did a bit of research. According to Stats SA, the average age of menopause in South African women is 55. So you just have to have your period for a little bit longer. And then 40, the magic number 40, I love this number because this is where things just start happening in your life. When they say life begins at 40, this is what they mean because um amongst other things of course so if at the age of 40 in the event that you stop menstruating right it's important that you don't freak out this is considered early menopause but when that happens you mustn't just be like oh um i've got early menopause and then you decide to just um not go and visit a gynae. You still need to go and visit a gynae so that there can be investigations that can be done. But stopping your period at the age of 40 is considered early menopause. So you may be excited. You've turned 40, life begins at 40, things start happening, and now you're happy you're not having your menstruation. But I always say your menstruation is just a basic way of checking, like making sure that everything is in check with regards to your hormones, because it's, your, your menstruation strikes a good balance between the hormone estrogen and progesterone. And the reason why I'm actually mentioning this is that with that beautiful balance that I'm talking about, your bone health is important, your mental health is important, your cardiac health is important, your fertility is important. And lastly, your sexual health. So to just um, explain it simply, is that a woman who goes through menopause, they don't produce oestrogen anymore. That's why women who are going through menopause are, have a decreased um, bone mineral density, which means basically their bones are kind of like brittle and they're prone to fractures. And I'm sure we've all got grandmothers or maybe mothers where um, the forgetfulness that happens and the emptiness syndrome where you're moving out of home and it's like the worst thing that has ever happened to her. That's all part of the um, menopausal signs and symptoms. And with sexual health, women um, with, with, um, who are in menopause, then they get what we call vasomotor symptoms. So that's the hot flushes that women complain about, the vaginal atrophy, so which means the dryness of the vagina. So you're actually not even enjoying sex anymore. And who wants to, who, who possibly enjoys sex with a dry vagina? You get what I'm saying, right? And then lastly, um, your fertility. Right. So when should you worry about your menstruation? I've told you what's normal, what's abnormal, and that you must love your period, you must embrace your period, and indeed you must. So Secondary amenorrhea, what that means is that you've had your menarche, so you've been menstruating all along, and then all of a sudden you don't menstruate. So this is usually diagnosed after six months of not having any form, um, any menstruation at all. But I always say to patients, don't wait for six months and say, oh, well, I've got secondary amenorrhea now. It's important that you actually track your period. So when you miss it that first month, nothing to really stress about, but you keep tracking it because you don't know if the next month is, um, it's going to come or not. And with that, with some, um, with some patients, they'll have that, um, that one month where there is no period and then all health breaks loose. No. Just monitor your period, and you know now that there is a concept such as secondary amenorrhea. So um, just bear, um, bear that in mind. Delayed menarche, what that means is that it's a girl who basically starts her menstruation late. And you normally see this because um, what happens is that the girls come home and then they'll tell you Victoria started her period, Sipokazi started her period, and 
janitor started her period, but I haven't. And the next thing is, I know they use grades now. I think standard six is grade eight. Um, grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, nothing has happened. Everyone is going for sweet 16 and she still hasn't started her menstruation. So by the age of 16, a girl should have started her menstruation. Primary amenorrhea, um, this is actually quite important because girls kind of like, and, and I actually urge the mothers who have um, girls, is that you need to really, by at least by 40, there must be a period. And if it hasn't come, you need to go and seek some sort of help so we can see what's wrong. And this picture here that I've got here, I hope everyone can see it clearly. So I'm not taking you for an anatomy class, but what I really want you to appreciate is that you've got ovaries here. And in this area around here, that's where the uterus is supposed to be. So in terms of primary amenorrhea, I mean, this is one of the causes. This girl does not have a uterus. And without a uterus, guess what? There's no myometrium, there's no lining of the womb. And therefore the balance that I talk about there is, it, it has no way to actually do its thing. Abnormal uterine bleeding and heavy menstrual bleeding. So with abnormal uterine bleeding, that basically, um, when remember when I spoke about the 2135, so it's stuff that falls outside of that and there are different causes of that, which are structural and non-structural causes. And then heavy menstrual bleeding. So this is a bit of a sketchy one because I've just told you that you can't really measure your menstruation if, um, your menstrual blood unless you use a, a menstrual cup. But what's important about this is that when you have your period, you're using a lot more sanitary way than the average person. You are changing a lot more frequently. So within the hour already, you've leaked through that super plus, plus, plus tampon and those huge pads, which are like nappies. I think my son is just traumatized about that. But um, so that's so important. And if you're waking up regularly in the night to go and um, to change your sanitary way, that is all um, good clues as to, okay, you could be having heavy menstrual bleeding. But now it's very important that I say, I, I say this in terms of changing sanitary way, because some women like they'll have a little drop on their pad or a little, there's the tip of the pad tampon has a little drop of blood and then they go and change it because they just don't like the whole feeling of just blood being stuck somewhere. So when I say you are changing, this means full pad, full tampon. Um, the one lady in the video said when she gets off the taxi, she has to see if there's spots um, on the chair. And that is a reality for some, for some women. And we all have these stories to tell. Yeah, sometimes because you haven't really put the pad properly, it's not high enough in the front or it's too much to the back and so forth. But if you are feeling dizzy from your period, you are being admitted from having your period and you're getting blood transfusions and you're chronically on iron tablets, then it's something to worry about. Right, so I spoke about abnormal uterine bleeding. So these are just the different causes um, of abnormal uterine bleeding. But what I really want to focus on um, is the with the adenomyosis, and I know there was a question about that, and I said they must listen to today's talk, is that um, what, you, what happens is that you have um, the lining of the womb that grows in the muscle of the uterus, right? So with that, you have the menstrual pains, the, the serious menstrual pains, which I'm going to talk about later, and then you have the heavy menstruation as well. With the fibroids, it really depends on where they are located in terms of the um, causing feeding. Um, I don't know if you can actually appreciate the picture on the right, but that is a real patient that we had. And she just, her whole uterus was just full of fibroids. So it really does happen. So what I wanted to say is that if you've got a fibroid, which is inside the cavity of the womb, then you're going to have heavy menstrual bleeding. But if you've got a fibroid that's just chilling here, right? That's not going to cause heavy menstrual bleeding, but may cause pain and discomfort. And then in terms of medication, if you're an anticoagulant, so basically blood thinners and so forth, that can also result in your um, heavy menstrual bleeding. And then I want to play, um, pay specific focus to a bleeding disorder, because this is the one that we often miss as health workers and, um, and possibly as a patient, you may not think about it. So if you're continuously getting um, nosebleeds, and you bruise easily. When you go to the dentist, the dentist tells you that, no, it's just a simple tooth extraction. And the next thing you're being rushed to the emergency room because you're just exsanguinating from your guns. And, um, and you've been pregnant and you've had 
um, some sort of bleeding after um, delivering that required you to have a whole lot of blood transfusions, ICU admissions and so forth. Important, these are telltale signs that there could possibly a bleeding disorder. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of things that cause abnormal uterine bleeding in a woman. So before I carry on um, with the menstrual pains, what I really want to say is, and those of you who were there last night know my thing about menstrual diary, menstrual diary, menstrual diary, anything outside of those numbers where I said um, you can use them for Powerball, you need to seek help and every woman should be going on their menstruation. Right. So my next, the next part of this talk is about um, period pains, what we call dysmenorrhea, which basically means painful menstruation. So with dysmenorrhea, we've got primary dysmenorrhea and we've got secondary um, dysmenorrhea. What's primary dysmenorrhea? So that's the normal run of the mill where women use it as an excuse to not have sexual intercourse with their partners, like, oh, I've got period pains, but actually it's just like a hot water bottle and maybe you might pop a pill, you know, just to settle you and stuff. I know it seems like I'm really making a joke. And the reason why I'm saying this, because then the secondary dysmenorrhea, which is really a severe form of dysmenorrhea. And why is this a severe form? Basically what happens is that this is the type of period where your life just, you feel your life sucks, right? Every month you just dread having your period. These are the women who are like, please just take my uterus out because I can't deal with my period pains, right? And the, and the thing with secondary dysmenorrhea, it means that there is an underlying cause that's actually causing these um, severe menstrual pain. So my blanket rule um, about menstruation is that, uh, about menstrual pain, I beg your pardon, is that if you're having menstrual pains that interfere with your quality of life. What does that mean? You are continuously not at work. You are getting retrenched from work because they know you've just used up all your sick leave days, you've used up all your annual leave days, and it's just, they're asking themselves, why did they even bother employing you? If it interferes with your relationships, it's important. If it pulls you away from social event and just by, just so, um, by socializing with people, that is a problem. No woman should have that type of period pain. So if you are having that type of period pain, ladies, please go and see your gynae so that you can get um, assessed as to what the cause is. So with that being said, I'm busy telling you about you know, the most disastrous period pains and how you must go and see a gynae. So another little bit of an anatomy lesson. So if you look at this picture here, this is the bladder, this is the uterus, and this is the rectum. The reason I'm showing you this, there's a case of overlap when it comes to chronic pelvic pain, right? So it could be um, something like if you get chronic UTIs, and if anyone has had UTIs, your bladder is literally burning, it is painful, you do not know what's going on, you are confused with life. And then I'm going to leave the uterus for later. And then with regards to um, the rectum or um, the bowel, is that constipation. Has anyone ever been so constipated, you feel like the diameter of your feces is like the size of your neck, right? So can you imagine if this is all full with feces, right? And obviously there's discomfort because of the nerve innovation that we have here. So things kind of like you know, overlap a bit. And the reason I'm telling you this is um, I'm really sp paying specific focus to endometriosis is that you get these ladies who go from pillar to post and they really feel like, you know, am I actually crazy? Am I really experiencing this pain? If you look at this picture, there's the part where they don't have the general surgery part which um, is where the bowel would come, is that you could have chronic UTIs, right? Or you could have endometriosis, you could have PID, but the whole point is that because of the, um, the anatomy of the pelvic organ, sometimes there could be a delayed diagnosis with actually um, what's wrong. So yes, you may come to a gynae, right? And then we assess and we assess, we're like, you know what, we actually can't find anything. And there's a possibility that this could be outside of the uterus, it could be the bladder, it could be the rectum. So it's, it's, it's really a patient's game when it comes to um, menstrual pains, but also with that being said and done, I don't want you to say, oh, okay, fine. I've got these menstrual pains. I don't go to work. That means I have UTIs every single time I have my menstruation. That's a bit of a telltale sign like as to what's going on. Right. 
So when you come to a gynae, right, and you're complaining about this pain during your menstruation and so forth, obviously I'm going to focus on what's going on within my my area, but not ignoring the other areas. Remember yesterday I spoke about biopsychosocial model and multidisciplinary approach towards looking after a patient. So here, this is basically a fibroid uterus, right? And, and these are real pictures. This is what we took out of her. She basically had fibroids everywhere. And this is the result thereof. So this is a woman who, because of the location of the fibroids, they're everywhere, she would complain of, um, um, dysmenorrhea, she would complain of heavy menstrual bleeding. So in terms of that, it's about ascertaining what the cause is and then dealing with it. And that other previous slide, there are a number of causes that could cause your heavy menstrual bleeding or your dysmenorrhea. This is what we call endometriosis. This is an endometrioma, which is, means that it's a cyst full of endometriotic um, Fluid. It actually looks like chocolate mousse when you open it up. But this is also a telltale sign. So this is done via laparoscopy, where we can see into the pelvis as to what's causing the pain. And this is adenomyosis, which we can diagnose on MRI and an ultrasound. So basically, these little dots that you see here ideally should be here. So they got lost along the way and settled here, right? And this is what adenomyosis is. So I think I'm actually coming to the end of my presentation. So in the spirit of break the silence, whether it's your six-year-old boy or your six-year-old girl, if a period pain interferes with your quality of life, this is considered abnormal. If your period pain results in you having anemia, it is abnormal. If you require a blood transfusion as a result of your period, this is abnormal. And it is normal to keep track of your period. You know, I'm obsessed about period tracking. And it is normal. Um, sorry, that was actually supposed to say talk about it. Oh, my word. And it is normal to talk about it. So we need to talk about this, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any who have joined in. Um, we need to talk about our, our women's health issues. Because remember, you may be suffering in silence, but you don't know if you have a fellow sister who's going through the same thing. The one thing I don't cover in this talk, and I'm hoping in your poll, you're going to want these monthly. We're going, I didn't really cover um, in terms of the treatment options. As you can see, there's different causes and I'll really require a whole lot of time to go through each one. But for me, the take home message here is, if anything is abnormal, which I have pointed out, please go and see a gynae. Thank you so much for your attention. I've really enjoyed the last two days and I really hope that you have learned something and hopefully get the opportunity to carry on paying it forward one woman at a time. Indeed, one woman at a time. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lusanda. Dr. Lusanda is a specialist uh, obstetrician and gynecologist. She is currently practicing at uh, Charlotte Mark at Johannesburg Academic Hospital uh, and part-time at MediClinic and lectures at Vets University. And she founded uh, the My First Gyne hashtag. Uh, this is a YouTube channel where she just uh, uh, gives all these details and uh, yeah. this takes away <laughs> <laughs> this takes away from um, the anatomy and physiology that you drew during your biology sessions. Those are real ovaries. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much for that. And uh, please stay on, uh, Doc. We are going to run that poll as we did indicate. Uh, now the question to you as our audience, do you talk to, um, do you talk to, who do you talk to about your fertility and menstrual issues? Your friend? family member, mom, dad, your GP, your clinic sister, your gynae, or experts on social media, like your Dr. Google uh, kind. So please uh, do share with us. Who do you talk to about your fertility and menstrual issues? A friend, a family member, uh, your GP, your clinic sister, your gynae, or an expert on social media. Maybe you follow uh, the My First Gaini, uh, channel, YouTube channel, you never know. Uh, so that might be you. Do give us um, your take on that and uh, we are going to be giving you the results uh, immediately. Uh, so 36% uh, says my friend, 26% um, says family member, 7% says GP, <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
and nobody goes to the clinic sister with menstrual issues and 20 percent your guy um so that should uh, really say whoop whoop yeah. for you yeah um, and 11 percent says i will uh, go to uh, social media and and check out uh, my symptoms thank you thank you so much uh, for that presentation and we are going to be taking questions um just after dr cindy's uh, presentation and we thank you for having joined us all right i just want to acknowledge some of the people who've joined us uh, thank you naledi for hooking up your friend um even though your friend uh, didn't tell us who her name is uh, but thank you so much uh, for inviting a friend. We encourage that. And uh, also, um, just a reminder, Tato, thank you so much for reminding me that I need to look cute all the time because you never know who's taking a picture. Because uh, there's a picture right now on, on Twitter. Um, yeah, I, I don't look, yeah, but it's okay. I always look cute, that I know. All right, right now I'd like to welcome Dr. Cindy Siwe uh, Fansail. Those of you who don't know, she's also Doreen, by the way. And uh, <laughs> I don't know how she manages to still keep smiling like that after doing such a tough show. You know, relationships and money are just never friends. Um, so Dr. Cindy uh, is going to be sharing about some of the most common health issues that she sees in her practice. And uh, she's just come uh, from her show, Sidebar, on Kaya FM. And uh, good evening and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Chriselda. Um, whenever I go to the doctor um, and they call out Doreen, and they say Doreen must come through, I, because it's not a name I use all the time, I just sit there staring into space, having forgotten that that's my name. But that's my, yeah, that's my official name. And then, of course, I go by Cindy. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that Evan's back here. Lusanda, thank you so much for a great presentation, um, which really covers a lot of the aspects um, of menstruation and some of the problems. Um, I think the, the biggest thing for me is that um, it's, it's, it's to break, first of all, to break the silence and, and the stigma around menstruation. Um, I, I think we were brought up in a way where we, we didn't speak much about menstruation and just always hush hush. You know, if you started your period, you, you know, you didn't have to, you know, I remember when I started my period, I, I didn't tell anyone just before a swimming lesson um, at, high, at high school, we were forced to swim and we were told that we'd swim even if we were on our periods. And my period came when we got to the, to the, to the, swimming, um, to the swimming changing room and I ran back to res. I had, a, I had my little box with my pads and my tampons. I shoved the tampon up my vagina and I went back and I continued swimming. But I didn't tell many people that I started my period. And I think um, we have to change the culture around how we speak about periods. We need to celebrate starting our periods and just make it something we can speak about openly. I mean, you've seen when you need a pad or you need a tampon, you whisper to your friend, you're like, oh, I'm going to do you have a tampon or a pad for me? But when you're asking for a panado, you speak about very openly. Oh, I have a headache. Can I please have a panado? But when it comes to um, sanitary way, we're a bit more hush-hush about it. Um, so I'm hoping that such conversations are going to make us change um, our attitudes towards that. Um, so more recently, um, when, I, when I speak to patients around uh, about menstruation, two things always come up. It's the excessive bleeding and, of course, the painful periods. And I'm happy that Ulusanda has pointed out what is normal and what isn't. So heavy bleeding is not part of a woman's life. Um, I, I know that when I grew up, I mean, I used to bleed very heavily. I'd bleed for seven days. And the first four days were always hellish. Um, I was just told that that's just how it is. You know, my mom said to me that's how she had her periods. And um, that's just how it was. And, and that's just what I accepted, I accepted it. Oh, okay, this is it. Um, I'm, 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 I'm 12 years old. My periods are heavy. My periods are painful. And this is the life that I was going to, um, I'm going to live. And I spotted a few times. I remember one of the most embarrassing situations for me was when, when I'd gone to have my hair done. I used to have hair back then. And I was sitting under a dryer. And I'd been under the dryer for quite a while. And I was on my period. And when I got up, I had, I'd missed on the chair. And no one said anything. Right, so I get up, my hair's done, and I'm getting up to go and pay, and everyone's quiet, like there's this deadly silence. And eventually, someone says that, oh, um, you know, you take a look at your skirts. Not even using the words, just like take a look at your skirts. And I turn around, and there's this big patch of blood on my skirts. There's a big patch of blood on the chair, and I just burst into tears. I paid the money for my hair, burst into tears. They gave me a towel, and I went home, and I never went back to the salon again. And you know, had I known that beating so heavily is not normal out of, out of sort medical care. So that's the first thing that I want, I want us to, to, to really grasp. If we forget everything else that Lusanda has said, at least just understand that 
heavy bleeding and painful periods are not part of life. Doesn't, it's not something you have to just sit back and accept that, oh, because I'm a woman, this is what has to happen. You need to see a doctor and make sure we find out why you're bleeding so heavily. Um, in my case, when I, when I look back, now that I'm a medical doctor, when I look back, I think um, a course of contraception would have probably helped, um, you know, balance my hormones and, and, and obviously help um, with, with, you know, with, with my cycle. Um, seven days was very long. I know that um, the first two days, I'd always be sick. I'd be vomiting, I'd have diarrhea, I'd have the, the period pain. And when I was still at high school, um, those first two days were, were, were spent in sick bay. You know, because I couldn't function, I couldn't do anything. So my quality of life was affected for one or two days every month without fail at high school. Um, when I started working um, as um, a medical doctor, as a young medical doctor, um, that is when my life changed because I then got hold of a certain medication that helps, um, you know, with, with period pain and managing and managing um, the bleeding. And that really was when my life changed. So my period went from being a seven day period, very heavy period, to being a four day period. And now I'm, I'm 44 and um, I don't even know when my period is coming. It just, it just arrives when it wants to. I really get period pain and I have a much better quality of life. Um, but the accepting of, of a certain quality of life just because we're women and this is what happens is something that we'll have to change our attitudes around. Um, I have a young, I have a, a daughter, she's 11, she's turning 12 in October, and I've already started speaking to her about menstruation. So these conversations must start early and um, speak to your nieces, speak to your daughters, um, you know, speak to them now about periods, speak to them and tell them what they can expect so that when something happens which is not, you know, part of the norm, they can get help early. I don't think any young woman or young or, 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 or girl has to go through what most of us have gone through. It's, it's not okay. And I'm happy that we're having this conversation. And I'm happy that Ulu Sanda has really explained all the different um, aspects of, of, of menstruation. I still haven't tried the menstrual cup. I think that's something that's um, still new to me. I, I'm still a, a tampon girl and occasionally I'll use pads. But the menstrual cup is something I haven't yet tried. Um, but for those of you that are really keen on, on being eco-friendly, um, I think the menstrual cup is something to consider. And we also have other products such as um, reusable pads and so on. So the world is moving towards a more eco-friendly um, um, way of, 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 of sanitary ways. So, so explore all the options. I mean, one of the questions someone was asking, what is better? It's not so much of, of what, it's, what is better. Try everything and then see what works for you. And then, of course, focus on the thing that works best for you. Um, but the conversations are important. My daughter has a period box. We have everything in that box. We have tampons, we have pads, we have panty liners. She's just waiting for the day. You know, I think I've made her, I've made her look forward to her period coming. And, um, you know, we don't have, there's nothing awkward about the conversation. Marnie, my son, Marnie is turning nine. He knows what periods are. Her dad has spoken about it. So it's something that we're looking forward to as a family, but it's something that I had to learn to embrace and then have that conversation with her because no one had that conversation with me. Even that I know about menstruation, I learned from magazines and, and from books, but uh, my mom and, and my granny didn't actually sit down with me and have the conversation. When I, when I, when I eventually told them that my period had started, um, they were excited, and then they got onto the phone and they phoned everyone else in the family to tell them, but they didn't have a conversation with me about what it meant to have started your period. Um, so let's change that culture of conversing um, around menstruation. Um, and I think I'll leave it there. I think those two things are the most important things. And of course, we're going to try and answer as many questions as we can, because last night we didn't get a chance to get through everything. But tonight, I think, um, you know, we'll try and answer as many questions as we can, because it's very, it's very helpful for you guys to hear us answering the questions. And thank you for all your interactions on social media. It's been fantastic to have so many of you interacting with Salome Range on social media and just expressing your happiness at this platform and this webinar. So thank you so much for that. Thanks, Chriselda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Someone pressed something that took me away <laughs> off screen, and I thought I was completely um, off screen. Uh, but yeah, we're still here. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. You remind me of uh, my experience with my daughter when she had her first menses, my eldest daughter. I think she was about 12, 13 at the time. So I'm trying to start the conversation because it's always so scary to speak to your doctor, your daughter. It's much easier when you speak to other people. Uh, and then I asked her, do you understand what it means um, to have menstruation casually? She goes, yeah, it means I'm ready to have sex. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Oh 
almost fell off the chair because I was like, what? <laughs> so we, we continue to run this poll and uh, encourage you to please respond to the question that we are going to ask. And immediately after that, we are going to be giving you the results. And then we'll go on to the Q&A session where all our guests uh, will be online. Would you be interested in regular break the silence, hashtag break the silence sessions uh, with a specialist? No, thank you is your first answer. Yes, monthly is your second answer. And um, yes, quarterly, that's your third option. Please uh, do indicate uh, to, for us um, so that we can plan ahead and bring you more of these uh, sessions or not. Um, it's entirely up to you. Uh, do share with us and we greatly appreciate that and get those fingers uh, working. And thank you so, so much to all of those who are participating. We see all your questions and uh, thank you for staying because oftentimes when you, you know, um, when you host sessions like these, uh, it's not always that you have people who stay on until um, the last person has presented until we do a Q&A session. And oftentimes people just listen to the parts that they want uh, to listen to and then just disappear. So we are going to be giving you the, po I tell you, no, thank you, 0%. <laughs> yes, quarterly, 27%. And a mighty 73% says, yes, monthly, please. And uh, we, will, we shall oblige. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for responding to that. All right, let's uh, have all our guests um, on online uh, so that uh, on the screen so that we can respond uh, to all your questions. And Dr. Cindy, thank you. Thank you so much. You had already started uh, responding to some of the questions. Um, the very first one is from Aisha. Aisha says, uh, can your menstrual pain, uh, can your menstrual pain product be used in conjunction with chemical meds? Uh, can um, the adenomyosis uh, be reversed and how best uh, to manage without it, uh, without going on the pill. And I guess that's for um, uh, Walter. And the second one is from Anonymous saying, I suffer from very painful periods and also struggle with weight, uh, weight loss. And that's uh, Dr. Cindy's favorite uh, topic. Uh, the doctor said, I am uh, retaining a lot of water in my body. Are these related? That's the question. And Mashiko uh, wants to know, I've been bleeding for 10 days now. Ten days. It's my first time bleeding for this long. I was on contraceptive uh, pill uh, till July, and I stopped this. Uh, I stopped using them uh, since yesterday. The heavy flow stopped, but I still get clots. Uh, should I be worried? And I'm going to have you respond to just those three questions, and then we'll we'll come back with another one. All right, Walter. We'll start with you. Chris Alda, um Maybe if you can slightly um, repeat the, the question, I might have missed the, the detail or the context of the question. All right. The, the question is, can your menstrual pain product be used in conjunction with chemical pain meds as in a paracetamol or any other? Okay. All right. Okay. I would actually say... Um, of course, when you use any medication in conjunction, there's, there's always a possibility of uh, a drug-to-drug -drug interaction, okay? But we haven't actually have a clinical data actually warranting the, 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 the conjunction use of both uh, therapies. Um, I would actually recommend that one actually might just try one specific product and see that it actually works and it's effective. So in, in, in order to, to eliminate the possibility of a drug-to-drug -drug interaction, that would be uh, my ideal recommendation. And Dr. Lucinda, the second question, uh, no, it was for Cindy, about the um, weight. I think Lucinda must answer that because there's a hormonal component to it as well that a gynecologist can speak to. Um, I think Lucinda must answer those two questions. Sure. Um. Is that the one about the adenomyosis and the um, retention of water? Yeah. The retention of water, correct. Okay. So on that, just that first one. For 10 days, sorry, Dr. Alessandra. 
Okay. All right. So with regards to this one, what I would like to know is number one, what pill was she using? Did it have, was it just a pill with just progesterone or did it have both components? And in terms of withdrawal of the pill, why did she stop it? And how was her menstrual cycle during um, the pill? So it's very difficult to ask, to say, should she be worried? But the one thing that I can pick up, you know, my Powerball numbers is that, um, she's been bleeding for 10 days. You shouldn't be bleeding for 10 days. It's very possible that there could be something going on. I went on about structural causes. So does she have a polyp inside the, um, the lining of her room? Does she have a fibroid that's just sitting there? And the, when she was on the pill, all this was being controlled. So it was just really symptom control. So mm -hmm. to answer your question, the 10 days and the extremely heavy bleeding, exsanguinating from your uterus, yes, be worried. You don't freak out. I need to say that because I get a lot of patients who come and they're like, oh my gosh, I think I've got cancer. No, don't freak out. Just no, especially go and get it checked out. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I started having severe cramps uh, when menstruating the year I lost my virginity. Is this normal? And that's from Anonymous. Uh, when is the best time uh, in your cycle to go see a doctor uh, to try and assess what the causes of your pain may be? Uh, and that's another anonymous and uh, uh, Tandy Babe. Uh, Tandy Babe says, hey, doc, uh, no one can find out what's wrong with me. Ever since I was 12, I've always uh, bled. I can uh, go on my period for 365 days. I get major, major blood clots and the bleeding keeps getting worse. Um, Trenoxamic uh, acid doesn't stop the bleeding and I don't have any pain though. Uh, I'm, I'm tired, uh, doc, please help. I think I'll tackle the first one. The one about the virginity and the period pain is probably one of the myths um, that exist mm -hmm. around menstruation. So um, there's no scientific evidence um, that once you've started having sex, um, your period pain you know you start having period pain i think it's it's it, maybe it, it was something that our elders um they used to, to say that yeah <laughs> from, from you know starting to having starting to have sex so it's uh, there's no there's no there's no truth to that and i think it's the same thing as the myth around period pain where people say once you've had a baby um your period pain um goes away i mean i was so excited after i had my first child so i thought okay this is it no more period pain well no it's not true so it just depends on the individual um so that, yeah those are two myths that that exist you know around period pain dr lisandro uh, um, okay so okay so the i'll do the next two so in terms of when is the best time, I always say any time is a good time. Just come and visit me because you're going to stay away and then you get busy and then you never actually make it to the guy knee and you'll find every excuse not to go because apparently we are the worst people ever. You must visit a dentist if you want to know who are the worst health workers ever. So for me personally, any time is a good time. If there's something that we can't do because of your um, menstruation, right, then we'll give you a clear um, treatment plan or management plan to say, please do come back on this specific day and we'll accommodate, right? And then the last one, this is actually a bit of a, um, a, a, bit of a worry because I would like to know how old the patient is, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, she started bleeding when she was 12 and she says, I've always bleed. I can go on my period for 365 days. Okay, I think there's a bit of embellishment there, but we're not, I'm not downplaying this because it is, um, it is a problem. And the fact that tranexamic acid doesn't work, which is really one of the tablets that we actually give patients when um, they do have this type of picture. So she really needs a full assessment mm -hmm. in terms of, remember I told you about the little chat that we have as girls when you come and visit the gynae. That chat is so important here because it's, does she have a bleeding disorder that was never diagnosed? You know, I, talk, I spoke about um, bleeding noses, bruising easily and so forth. It, what is actually going on? So I'm tired, doc, please help. Please go and see someone so that you can have this conversation. And I'm so glad that you actually put, it, um, you put up this question. Like Dr. Cindy said, heavy menstrual bleeding is just not normal. Lucinda, we haven't covered the issue of um, the water retention and the hormones. Um, so I think that's Where important. was that one? Did I miss that one? Yeah, just part of another question. But I mean, some women during the menstruation, their feet swell up, you know, they, 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 they retain water. Let's just talk around why that happens with some, with some women. 
So I always say progesterone is the best hormone at the best of times and the worst hormone at the worst of times. The reason I say that when you're pregnant, you want progesterone, that is the hormone that is going to keep your pregnancy going. But now outside of pregnancy, I mean, or even during pregnancy, when you have your feet swelling and so forth. So that's really part of it. That's why you get some women, when they get put on a progesterone only pill, they do complain about that swelling. They think they're gaining weight, but it's really that swelling that occurs. So we have to look at what type of pill? Is she on contraception? Sorry, I didn't get that part. No, she just she's not. That she, she so, in, and she has irregular mens menstruation, right? Uh, I don't know. Said, yeah. Um, so, it, it, tell, you can stay there looking pretty because most of the questions that um, are directed towards you about where to find the product. So we can deal with that last. Uh, maybe uh, uh, just going back to the questions, uh, Dr. Lusanda, um, that uh, is there is the way to diagnose endometriosis uh, still only undergoing lap laparoscopy? So what we've done now, we've kind of like moved on. Look, there's nothing wrong in doing a laparoscopy because what you want to do is actually get a piece of tissue that you can send to the lab that will tell us, okay, yes, it's endometriosis. But we also tend to be a bit more conservative now. And medicine is just such a beautiful thing because it's continuously growing where you can get, um, there are people who actually specialize in just ultrasound to look for endometriosis, but this would be like the deep, severe endometriosis. There's MRIs as well. So what, um, the, what normally happens is that endometriosis has a very specific history pattern, right? So what we do is that we'd start that patient on medication and see if, she, if she, um, her pains resolve. Mm -hmm. on the medication and if it does most likely because if she does not it does not resolve then there's something going on we've had it with patients where we've treated them for endometriosis and they're like you know what this medication you gave me does not help and then when we go in with a lab scope then you just see things you see things amazing things we get excited as doctors because now we're like yes this is what's wrong but unlucky for the patient because chances are um, with that, it's, it's basically what we call, it's, it's a messy pelvis. Do you know what I mean? So and, to answer your question, not necessarily. And when you say yes, we go ew. Um, <laughs> and Solomon <laughs> says, is it possible on, on that issue of endometriosis? Uh, and Solomon wants to know, um, is it possible for it to go away without surgery or is it chronic? So this is a very tricky one, right? And um, the reason I'm saying it's a tricky one, it depends on what the patient's issue with endometriosis is. It depends on the age of the, endo of the endometriosis. So we always say if someone is going to go and do a lab scope, it must be definitive surgery because you'll find a lot of patients who have endometriosis, they'll tell you, I've had 10 lab scopes, I've had seven lab scopes, I've gone to so many gynees and so forth. So I always say, if you've got endometriosis, go to an endometriosis specialist with a specific skill in laparoscopy because when you go in, you have to start now resecting those endometriosis lesion. So can your endometriosis go away? without surgery, and um, not necessary. Remember, endometriosis is a chronic condition. It can be managed, but you can never completely take it away. And I guess this is the last question on endometriosis. The rest of you, please visit your gynae. Um, please visit Dr. Lusanda. Um, saying, I have severe endometriosis and recently experienced pain in my bladder and rectum. Uh, does this mean that um, it has spread to those organs as well? It is very possible. So this is what we call deep infiltrating endometriosis. When I was talking about um, certain specialists who can do ultrasounds and actually diagnose this or an MRI. So it's very possible. So with endometriosis, very specific um, symptoms, dysuria, which means pain on urinating, dyspareunia, painful sex, right? Um, dyskesia, defecation, um, that is um, painful. So yeah, and then dysmenorrhea as well. So by saying, um, has, does that mean it has spread? Yes, because unless you are on some sort, of some sort of maintenance medication, it just carries on going, it carries on, it carries on. It's a chronic condition. It needs to be managed. And then Kola Sitela says, I always had um, the pain since day one, uh, but only day one of my, um, as in day one of my period. Um, and, and that was it. I would skip a month or two, 
Um, so I never kept a diary. Uh, there are lot of numbers that you talk about, uh, Dr. Lusanda. I also had acne so bad. I fell pregnant and had a miscarriage. And at two months after that, I had um, had normal menses, no pain, no skipping. Um, what could it be? Uh, it, I'm, I'm just so confused. Okay. Cindy, do you want to take that one or? No, no, you can take it, Lucinda. Okay. So, I mean, in the beginning, as she was talking, I'm thinking PCOS, 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 you know? <laughs> she's having irregular menstrual cycles. She's got acne so bad, you know? I'm just thinking PCOS, PCOS, PCOS. And remember, what I said yesterday about PCOS is that you don't necessarily have to have polycystic ovaries. Once you have those, then that causes the anovulation and you can't fall pregnant. But with but PCOS, you can still... She did fall pregnant, so it's very possible that she was ovulating at that time. And you know, our bodies are like amazing. And and I don't know if she had any other medication after that. Was she put on the pill after that? In terms of after she um, her miscarriage and so forth. So it's very difficult to, you know, sort out her confusion. But um, like with everything, you just want to have a lot more history around that um, specific event. But it what I'm happy about, though, in terms of her confusion, is that now she's having a normal menstrual cycle. Remember, a normal menstrual cycle is good. Yeah. Just like the one who's asking about uh, normal bleeding at the age of 25. <laughs> she says, is it normal to bleed less uh, at the age of 25? Uh, I'll, I'll give that to you, Dr. Cindy. Well, you know, I think... I always say to people that normal is, is a sitting on a washing machine. So you know, without, without knowing, you know, how she did before or, or what, and what she's comparing to, um, you know, I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry. I, I think if you're having painless periods and you're having short periods, then, you know, you should be the happiest person, um, or, you know, on earth. The one thing that came up that might not come up in the questions is just the concern around um, someone saying that gynecologists always recommend contraception and they're not mm -hmm. very comfortable with that. So um, I think Dr. Lusanda should address that, so that when a gynae does recommend contraception um, or, or, or some other hormone, you know, what's the rationale behind it? And if you're not comfortable with it, what are the other options? Thanks right. for that, Cindy. And then Anonymous wants to know, um, gynae always recommends um, birth controls. I personally do not feel comfortable uh, in as much as uh, we are told there are no side effects. Uh, I do not believe that uh, it is completely true. Pharmacists need uh, to make money and we are the market. Uh, is there really nothing else that uh, can assist with balancing of our hormones? Well, I love the fact that this question came up during this webinar, which is sponsored by a certain brand, Walter. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, there is your answer. There is your answer. But, yeah. um, and, and Walter, I really want you to take this up, you know. Absolutely. But what I want to say with regards to, I don't want to say there are no side effects to, um, to um, contraceptives. Everything has a side effect. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But... When we do um, prescribe the, um, the hormone tablet, it's not necessary for, for forever. You know, we need to mimic, we need to kick your body into action to start behaving. I don't know if in, the ladies that were there yesterday, I showed you a normal menstrual cycle. That's what we need to do. And as guidance, yes, we do use hormones to manipulate that. But with that being said, no one is forced to be on hormonal therapy. It's a conversation that we need to have because I'll never um, prescribe, or I don't think any of us would ever um, prescribe something because the whole thing is I'm going to prescribe contraceptive pills. Guess what? You're not going to take them. You're not even going to go to the pharmacy and then you're going to go to the next doctor. So the whole thing is we need to, the, the management plan needs to be a discussion, you know, yeah. so that you ex it's explained to you why we are doing it. But Walter, I want you to answer the, is there anything else? <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm glad that I'm glad that that question actually came up, uh, because as um, if you did follow on my presentation, um, that I've actually mentioned that as a business we've also actually um, identify a gap in the market where there are no um, natural um, uh, solutions 
to some of these healthcare uh, uh, challenges. And as a business, that's why we develop uh, products with natural and organic extract. But not only that, of course, you need, uh, even if something is natural, but it needs to be backed up by science to ensure that it can actually achieve the desired clinical outcome. And, and this is what we feel as biomedicine, actually, we're playing a very critical role in actually formulating and developing those natural products um, to achieve and to cater um, for that market that are so conscious and wanting to move away from hormone-based um, therapies. So yes, this is, uh, this is actually where um, the, uh, uh, biomedicine actually, um, with its innovative natural products actually uh, play a very important role. And that's the future, right? Indeed. <laughs> um, Dr. Lusanda, there's a question from Rufilo Mohale. Rufilo says, um, I'm 28 years old, I'm 28 years old, and I've been, I've, I've had very painful menstrual cycle every month. I've had um, these ever since I started in my early teenage years, and I'm now older and married. It is bad to a point where I would be hospitalized every month uh, for an injection. Does painful menstruation cause infertility? Uh, we've been trying for the past three years with no success. So um, I love this question and I wish I could go back to my slides, but basically just from reading that, I'm just thinking endometriosis, 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 you know, and I want to know, I would want to know about her sexual history, does she have pain on sex? And that's a problem with endometriosis, that there's a seven year delay with regards to diagnosis. So if you don't think it, you're not going to ask about it right? And then it's not going to be diagnosed. So we've been trying for three years with no success. Does painful menstruation cause infertility? Painful menstruation does not cause infertility, but endometriosis causes infertility. But with that being said, um, that we have to look, at, is there any other um, cause that could be um, um, causing, is there any other thing that could be causing this type of clinical picture? But just from like eyeballing it, I'm thinking endometriosis and she should really visit a gynae with special interest in fertility. Uh, Salome M, all right. And, and then somebody just clicked. Let's go back to Salome M. Salome M says, I'm 30 years old and I've had irregular periods and period pains most of my life. I had a diagnostic uh, laparoscopy um, and found out that both my tubes are blocked. Uh, they unblocked them, but the period stayed irregular without the period pains. Is it somehow linked to hormonal imbalance? So the irregular periods most definitely linked to some sort of hormonal um, imbalance. Um, with regards to the block tube, what does she say? She had a lab scope and they found block tubes. With, yeah. with block tubes, I mean, there could be a, there could be a lot of causes for that. Um, and um, what do you call it? TB of the tubes, common. Infection of the tubes, common. But from there, to answer her question about um, the irregular periods without pains, yes, it's most likely linked to hormonal imbalance. This one is addressed to uh, Dr. Cindy from Tado, uh, saying, does uh, being underweight cause irregular of, uh, irregularity of hormones or not? Uh, seeing your periods for months, or not seeing your periods for months. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, so um, what, what very few people know is that you need a certain amount of fat around your, around your thighs for you to start your period, um, because that's where you know, the hormones are something happens to around that fat. So athletes, people that really exercise a lot and are very slim and very thin built, generally will skip their periods. Um, if, if, a, if a child, for example, is very obese and gets enough fat around their thighs, they might even start their periods earlier because there's enough of that fat on their thighs. So yes, yes, your weight does play a role, especially that fat around the, the, the hips, around the hips, you know. So you'll find that your daughter will pad out a little bit before her period comes. It's all part of the process. And uh, Huawei P30 Lite, <laughs> that's your name, right? Uh, is it normal to sport and never see a period after taking uh, Primolet uh, due to absence of uh, period? Um, so this is actually quite a nice question because this is one of our um, investigations that we do. We call it a Riley's test. 
And the whole point of it is to induce a withdrawal bleed to see if the cavity if is patent, right? And also with the primalute is we give is, is we give a hormone progesterone to um to induce that withdrawal bleed. So for me, what I'm getting from that is that yes, she's got a patent outflow tract. Yes, there's some sort of hormonal imbalance. Yes, she needs to get on some sort of product, natural or unnatural or, or prescription, whichever one she prefers um, after discussion. But it's a good thing that she did actually have that type of situation where she spotted after it. But now we have to carry on with the whole management plan. She mustn't just stay away because there is a next phase to that. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's the person uh, whom you asked a question uh, saying, I, uh, yes, I am. Um, I'm not sure whether they're responding to uh, you, Dr. Lusanda. Uh, but Kanyile, uh, Zimbili Kanyile says, uh, can chemotherapy cause menopause? I, I did answer that one, and yes, it's very possible. It is very possible. Yeah, it, it, let me just say, it's, we call that iatrogenic menopause. So she was given, she had a certain drug that caused her ovaries to not function the way they should. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to find, I saw one for Walter. He's been <laughs> silent for too long. I've been thinking for the past two weeks, a very heavy flow. Every time I see a doctor, they give me contraceptive pills. Can I take Salome heavy menstrual bleeding to stop um, this heavy bleeding or must I see a doctor? Um, I would always recommend that if there's any form of abnormality, firstly consult with a healthcare professional, go see your doctor. Yes, um, our products are there um, as a supportive therapy to the outcome of which the doctor or your, your healthcare professional might, um, might, might, might diagnose you with. So we're there to offer supportive therapy and a solution to actually assist healthcare professional. But uh, you need to be diagnosed proper um, uh, 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 investigating needs to be done and get a proper diagnosis rather than just jumping into self-medication without seeking an advice of a healthcare professional. Is there any correlation between toxins, uh, shock syndrome, um, and how heavy periods uh, and or how many clots uh, one has during the menstruation? I'm not sure who's going to take that. I think we send them must answer that. Okay. Um, so to answer your question, no, because if you're having a heavy period, right, chances are you're changing your sanitary way very often. And the whole premise of toxic shock syndrome is those girls who keep their one tampon in forever. When I say forever, it's the day, it's the next day and so forth. Yes, you do get people like that. Guys, a tampon is supposed to be changed um, full or not. So there is no correlation. But with that being said, toxic shock syndrome, it is so rare. Like I've never seen one in the two minutes of being a gynae. You know, they describe it because products need to protect themselves to say, don't keep it on for a week. Don't keep a tampon in for a week. You will get toxic shock, um, shock syndrome. Maybe Dr. Lusanda, if you can explain what uh, toxic shock syndrome is briefly. So it's a bacterial infection that um, gets spread throughout your whole body and it could basically be fatal. And you get that from keeping um, your sanitary waste, specifically tampons, for longer than the specified time. But like I did say, it is really, really, really rare. But it's good to be aware of it because maybe that will... So, you know, kind of like point out to people that you must change your tampons regularly. All right, I'm taking the last round, then I'm going to ask you to please give us your concluding um, remarks. It's interesting that everybody is anonymous. <laughs> I'm hoping that we'll get to a place where we stop being anonymous because remember we hashtag breaking the silence and having these conversations um, to have faces and names so that we normalize talking about reproductive health issues. Anonymous wants to know, I get my period regularly, um, but the blood isn't normal every month. It tends to be brownish and um, like it's uh, coagulating. And is this normal? Coagulated blood uh, bleeding tends to be longer than usual. So um, that brown, it's almost like it's old blood 
yeah. you know, that has clotted. It's like a discharge. I don't know if anyone else has it there. You when you before you start your period, there's like almost this like brownish thing, and um, that's how you know that okay, something is about to happen. Then you have your normal menstruation. Some women may not get that fresh red blood because chances are she's having a very light cycle. So whatever comes down is not coming down with a gush. It's just like trickling and it's that brown stuff. Um, so with that though, what I'm, I'm picking up is that she's having an extremely light cycle, right? And um, it's nothing really to be worried about unless it, if it does bother her, then just to really get it checked out. I mean, everything that we're discussing here, you need to get checked out, guys. What I want people to understand, we can't diagnose over um, a webinar. We can only give information that can lead you to a health worker, whoever you are comfortable with. So with regards to that brownish, I, I call it a brownish discharge more than brownish blood, but it's just, remember when I gave the, um, the meaning of what menstruation is, it's all that debris that is lining the womb that is coming out. So it's just all blood draining. All right. I, I just want to thank everybody for staying uh, with us and um, asking all these questions. You make it very interesting um, to stay tuned, and we really appreciate that. And maybe if I can start with you, Walter, as we have our concluding remarks, um, perhaps uh, Spets, tell us, what next and where do we find the products? I know that you mentioned it uh, briefly when you started um, your slides, but uh, most of the participants had not locked on them. Yes, um, actually our products um, are available on our e-commerce uh, website um, on www.360biomedicine.co.za. We're also available on other online platform uh, channels um, such as Take A Lot, uh, we are available there and also on all independent, uh, most independent pharmacies, as we still are in the process of gaining um, listings on different channels and different um, uh, retailers, in, including the big chain uh, uh, pharmacies. So that will be happening sh uh, soon. And of course, in the pipeline, as I've mentioned, that there are several products that are also going to be coming to address certain conditions like uh, um, PCOS, uh, premenstrual syndrome and menopause that we'll be launching soon, yeah. And my favorite line to all of you as our guests, uh, put pressure on your pharmacies. <laughs> Get them to want the product. Make sure that it's on the shelves uh, for your ease, especially for your teenagers. Uh, Dr. Lusanda, your last words. Thank you very much, Walter. Thank you. Um, ladies and the gentlemen who've tuned in, you know, this is, I'm really passionate about this. And for me, more than anything, it's just education, education, education. We are so misinformed as women, which was really one of the reasons why I actually um, became a gynae and chose the platforms that I have chosen. And it's just really to educate women and to talk to your sister, to your mom. To, I mean, we see, we see grannies who come with things like cervical cancer because they've never had a pap smear. And I know this is not the aim of the talk, but my thing is break the silence. That hashtag is so important. Every tweet that I'm going to tweet after this is going to have hashtag break the silence so that you can get the information you really, really need to pay for. Don't keep it to yourself. That is not fair. That is selfish. Don't keep it to yourself. Share with your fellow sisters. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lusanda. Share with your friends. Share with your friends. Don't keep it to yourself. That makes you selfish. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Cindy? Uh, I think my closing statement is, Chris Alder. I just want to encourage people to, to speak to their doctors and to their healthcare professionals. Yeah. It's, it's a relationship. It's teamwork. So it can't be that you leave a consulting room and you still have questions or you're in doubt about what, what the treatment entails and so on, that is, not, that is not what's meant to happen. So please ask questions. Don't leave that room unless you are satisfied with everything that has to happen with your health. Um, so that's what I encourage people to do. And it's important to know that your health is your responsibility. No one else's but your responsibility. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of you for staying tuned with us. Uh, we were worried that we might be only speaking to five people due to load shedding. And I see many of you made a plan. And uh, we thank you. And until we meet next time, you never know what topics uh, we might be bringing to you. 
do join us on social media. Uh, we are on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, Salome Range, uh, look for us. We are all over. Let's together break the silence on women-related health issues. And thank you so much for tuning in. Hope we've eased uh, some of the tensions that you have uh, when you must have a conversation with your partner, especially when they go, nah, it's that time of the month. I have a headache. Now you are informed. You can actually just give them a Salome product and uh, take the headache away. Thank you. Good evening and uh, good night. Mm -hmm.